In the first part of this tutorial, we created the sketches and color palette for the milkshake label we want to design. We also created the mockup and learned how to export the label we'll be using to create our design, starting with the next step, the illustration. We are going to open the milkshake label we exported from Blender and we're going to save it as Clip Studio Paint file to keep all our changes and in case we want to use the same file to create the rest of the labels. Then we're going to proceed to create our illustrations. These illustrations are going to be very simple and we're going to be using the same style for all the labels. We are going to create an outline on the fruits or any other elements that describe our milkshake and make 4 or 5 different ones. It doesn't need to have a lot of details, just make sure the fruit is recognizable. We're going for a realistic style of fruit but you can stylize it depending on how you want your design to look. Here I'm creating different kinds of strawberries, some of them whole and other cats in half, so there's a bit of variation in our label. We're going to be doing the same with the chocolate and banana flavors. Once we have our strawberries drawn, we're going to be duplicating them. We want a more controlled repetition but at the same time we want something that looks natural instead of having a pattern that repeats itself, so we're going to do it manually. We are going to try to spread the different drawings around the label, trying not to keep the same ones in just one place. We need to keep the space where the text will go blank and we'll modify it once the final text is there to make sure it looks perfect. We're going to add some more variation, changing the size of the illustration. If the line is too thick or thin when we do this, we can just redraw over it with the same size of brush we used before. Coloring the illustration is going to be very easy. We're going to add the background color, a light pink, and then at random we're going to choose some strawberries just like we did on a sketch then we're going to color them. We are not going to make the coloring perfect. In fact, we're going to create a new layer underneath the line and we're going to add some blobs of color. It doesn't matter if we color at sight, that's what we're aiming for. We can use a big size brush to make it easier and faster, or we can fill the strawberries precisely and then move the color a few millimeters outside the line to create an offset look. We're going to repeat that with the white and then we're done with the illustrations. Filling the line out and then moving the color a few millimeters is going to give us a screen print offset effect, giving it a more retro and organic style if that's what we're aiming for. You can also add some texture or a half tone if you want to achieve that style. For the typography we're going to be using two styles, a flowing organic typography for the milkshake name, something that has some movement and dynamism, and a non-serif for the rest of the information as we want it to be easy to read in a small size font. I'm going to skew the typography and give it an angle to make it more dynamic, adjusting the space and the height of some characters. I'm going to be repeating that with the rest of the text at the front without deforming it, but I'm going to keep the text on the back horizontal, where the rest of the information is.
We are going to be using black for all the typography on the front and the mix of the different colors on the back. The typography for the list of ingredients and nutritional information needs to be clear, so we are using a readable font and the size that's not too big but it's optimal for reading once it's on our printed label. We're going to add a box underneath the nutritional information and the expiration date to make both of them easier to read and also to create some contrast with the colors. Once we're done with the typography, we can add other elements like the barcode or recycling icons. We can move some of the strawberries to accommodate them to the typography in case we need it and we're done with our label. We just need to repeat the process with as many different flavors as we want. Once we're happy with how our label looks, we're going to save the Clip Studio Paint file and then we're going to export it for the different media. If we want to print our label, we're going to have to either delete the white background or crop the label to its actual size. Go to File, Export Single Layer, JPG or TIFF. If you're printing at home, you can use the first one. If you're printing professionally, they might ask you for TIFF or maybe even a PDF. Always make sure to ask what kind of file they need before exporting. It's recommended to use a resolution higher than 150 dpi if you're printing professionally, but that resolution is good enough if you're printing at home. To export for social media or to your portfolio, you can do a composition to make the design pop, or just export the label as it is. Whichever you do, export the file as either JPG or PNG and use a resolution of 72 dpi. As we already created our bottle as a 3D object, we can use it now to create a mockup to publish to our social media, portfolio or even to print it in a magazine. We are going to open the project in Blender and we're going to go to the label material. On our UB editor, we're going to open the file of our label, make sure it's JPG or PNG, and we're going to adjust the UV to our label until it looks perfect. We're going to add a couple more cuts to the label to adjust it using Ctrl R with the Loop Cut tool, bringing it to the top and bottom of the label until the image in it looks good. Once we have it, we're going to create an infinite backdrop, add some lights, set the size and resolution of the image we want to export, and render. We can open the image in Clip Studio Paint and edit it to make it look perfect. 